Hi guys, Jackie with Famish Farm, and this week we have peaches in season. And you start out and you just eat them fresh, and then maybe you get some ice cream, put some on ice cream, but you still have more peaches to use. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to make two entrees and one dessert. The dessert will go in the freezer after the first night, and the entrees we'll have this week. So what are we making? First up from the summer issue of the 2022 Southern Living Magazine, a Texas state favorite apparently, peach cream kuchen. Kuchen? Kuchen? I don't know how to say it, but we'll see if it's any good. From foodnetwork.com, a sweet tea brine chicken with peaches, arugula, and mint. And another recipe from Half Baked Harvest, a pesto peach chicken in white wine with burrata. And I don't know if I'm saying that right either, but here we go, guys. Let's get cooking. So first up, we're going to make some sweet tea. Now you can use her recipe or just make it however you make it. She starts with four cups of water, three quarters cup of sugar. Then we're going to just cut a lemon in half, and half of that is going to be reserved for later. But one, one half will go right in the pot. Um, squeeze it and then throw the squeezed half of lemon into the pot. Um, before I just looked and I didn't realize there was fresh ginger called for in the recipe, but I do have some frozen. So I'm going to pull out a calls for a one inch piece cut into quarter inch coins. I'm going to do as close as I can to that equivalent. Our brine is going to be made with a quarter cup of salt. And I, it calls for kosher salt. I do not have kosher. I use a combination of regular table salt and some sea salt. Here's my half a lemon. Then we're going to move over to the stove top. And you want to bring this water to a simmer over medium high heat and give it a stir until your salt and sugar are dissolved. Then you'll remove it from the heat. That's going to take a couple of minutes, so we'll continue on with our recipe. We'll prepare eight black tea bags. And honestly, I bought black tea for this. I usually just have green tea. I think you could probably do the same with green tea. but I can use the black tea, so I went ahead and got it. We'll get those tea bags prepared, and then I just kind of tie them up on the end so they'll all stick together. Over on the stovetop, the sweet tea mixture, the brine, is basically ready. So we're going to give that another stir and then pull that off the heat. Then you're going to want to add your tea bags and then let them steep four or five minutes. I just make sure that the tea bags are down in the water fully, kind of push them down into the water and let them steep. After our five minutes are up, I'm gonna pull the little sachet of tea bags out of there and I do squeeze out the liquid from the tea bags. This is kind of a controversial thing. I've always done it. I will probably always continue to do it. You do you, though. So remove your tea bags, add three cups of ice, and let this cool off for five to eight minutes. Then you're going to take a whole chicken that's been cut into eight pieces, or in my case, I just use chicken quarters cut. You're going to submerge them into the brine. I used a plate and a heavy dish of water to keep them submerged. You can do that for 8 to 16 hours. I did it not quite 8 and the flavor was still fantastic. So here I am. I'm going to pour off the brine. And then we're just going to basically dry off these pieces of chicken. So I put a paper towel on my cookie sheet and then remove the pieces of chicken to this cookie sheet. We're going to be cooking this on the grill over medium indirect heat. So she gives you instructions on how to do it over gas or charcoal. We're using our charcoal grill and 
We do not preheat the grill for the 15 minutes. My husband refuses to do that because he thinks it's wasting the gas, which I kind of agree. You're going to be opening it and losing heat anyway. So you guys do you though. You're welcome to preheat your grill if you like. I'm going to finish blotting these off and then they are going to go out onto our three burner gas grill. The two sides of the grill are set to medium heat and then the center is where the indirect heat comes in. That burner's been shut off. And now we're going to prepare our peaches. We've got some olive oil and we're going to basically just rub this olive oil into our peaches. Our peaches are going to be grilled um, on the grill. It doesn't say anything about removing the skin, so I go ahead and just leave the skin on and I do remove that after they come off the grill. It just comes off easier that way. And then we'll also give our lemon a little bit of oil too, and then we'll set those to the side. And then we're going to prepare our salad. This is some mint leaves out of the garden, and we're just going to put those, stem them, and put them in the bowl. And then the recipe calls for five ounces of baby arugula. And uh, guys, I'm just going to use the greens that we have in the house. In this case, it was a package of butter lettuce, I think, is what the, uh, I can't make that out what it says, but this is pre-washed, triple washed lettuce. And I'm just going to do enough for dinner for Rod and I. So it's not the full five ounces. It's what I thought was appropriate for two people for dinner. Out on the grill, Rod has been cooking these for 20 to 25 minutes. I think he probably did the 25 minute. And now he's going to turn them over so the skin side of the chicken gets some grill marks on it. And I'm going to come out with the peaches and get those started. And these cook pretty quickly. So we're going to grill the peaches and that one half of lemon for two minutes. And then we're going to turn the peaches over and grill them for another minute. The lemon can stay on for um, most of that time. In fact, it could have stayed on for all the time. I think we took it off a little early. When we come back inside, we're going to make a vinaigrette with some olive oil and that lemon juice. We'll whisk that up with a, just a little bit of salt and a lot of pepper. In our case, you may use more salt if you prefer. And apparently I don't show you um, me slicing those peaches. I do take the skin off and then slice them into the salad. We'll dress the salad and give it a nice toss. And that is our first entree. Can I just tell you, I've not done a lot of brining in my life. And this was excellent. I would make this again in a heartbeat and I would even consider using a different grilled fruit to go with it if I didn't have peaches. Just super good, guys. Now, having said that, Rod did say that he, it was too salty for him. So I'd made a note next time to cut the salt back to one to two tablespoons instead of the quarter cup. You guys that don't have problems with sodium will probably be just fine exactly as the recipe is written. It was delicious. Please make this, guys. It was great. The recipe that this came from was a Southern Living Magazine article that featured peaches and three different state favorite recipes. So we're going to start by making the crust for this dessert. And we're going to start out with two cups of all-purpose flour. Then we'll add a quarter cup of just white sugar, or if you want to use whatever sugar alternative you'd like. A quarter teaspoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of kosher salt. And I, of course, just use a sprinkle of regular table salt. Then we have a stick of unsalted butter that we're going to be cutting into this flour mixture. And I'm just going to use my pastry knife to do that and get that mixed up. That takes a, a couple minutes to get this. It's my butter is, it doesn't say to bring it to room temperature or anything. So I'm using pretty uh, chilled butter. 
for this particular recipe. Not sure if it makes a difference. She mentions that you could also use two knives to cut this butter in. You're going for a fine crumb look to the mixture and I think that's what I ended up with. And then we're gonna use our it calls for a nine by nine by two pan. I'm just using my closest pan to that, which I think is less than a nine by nine. We're going to add um, cooking spray and then we'll dump out our crumb mixture. And we're going to just press these crumbs against the bottom and up the side. It calls up an inch up the side of the pan. So we're going to take a few minutes to do that. Now, this dessert was not my favorite dessert ever. And I will tell you, partly that was because I thought the crust didn't have a lot of flavor. And so I thought it could benefit from either adding an extract like almond extract or lemon extract. I even thought that it would be really good with some ground almond flour instead of all of that all-purpose flour or even just some chopped up walnuts or pecans. Um, nothing against, you know, the hill country of Texas people or the Germans that came up with this recipe. I just, it was a little bland to my taste. So if there's anybody from Texas watching this and you have some ideas or your family maybe does it a little different, please leave a comment. I'd love to know. So now we're just going to take these peaches and arrange them evenly over the crust. They may do this in a very artistic manner. I, of course, just do my hurry up and get it done kind of um, assembly here. It ends up being covered by another part of the recipe, so it really doesn't matter how pretty you make it. When we're done with that, in a separate bowl, we're going to add the other half cup of sugar that the recipe calls for, a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and then we're going to mix that together. It's probably a little late to remind you to preheat your oven to 400, but I'm probably just doing it myself. So preheat that oven, guys. And we're just going to sprinkle this over the top and then we're going to bake this for 15 minutes, it says, until most of the sugar is melted. While that's baking, we're going to take a cup of sour cream and two large egg yolks and we're going to mix those up until they're smooth. Now I end up saving the egg whites. I'm going to do a breakfast for dinner where I'll do either omelets or scrambled eggs. So I'm going to save my egg whites for later in the week. Now this was another part of the recipe that I thought could use a little additional flavor, um, either sweetness or something. It just seemed odd, just a sour cream flavor. And again, maybe I'm missing something, but um, the peaches kind of did not permeate that sour cream layer as much as I would have hoped. So here we're just going to spoon the sour cream mixture over the peaches and then we'll put it back in the oven uh, just until it's set another 15 to 20 minutes. And it did take the full 20 minutes in my case. So this came out of the oven and it was beautiful and... It smelled good, but this was not my favorite tasting dessert. We did serve it with a little tiny scoop of ice cream on the side. It's not a recipe that I would make again without doing two things, punching up the crust and punching up the sour cream layer. I just think there were many other things you could have done to make it just better. Um, the sour cream mixture maybe uh, puree up some of the peaches and add to it and like I said the addition of nuts to the or at least almond flour or something like that to the crust layer would have been good not a winner in our house our second entree from half-baked harvest 
I've used half-baked harvest recipes before and have always enjoyed them. This one was a very good recipe that I would make again also, kind of a fancy dinner. Now, I did make lots of substitutions, guys. I'll point those out as we go. What we're going to do is make a dredge here for our chicken uh, cutlets, and I use chicken breast in my case. We've got some... Um, Half, a quarter cup of all-purpose flour and I put a teaspoon of dried rosemary in there and we're just going to mix that together. I did kind of try to crush up the rosemary a bit and then we've got a large egg that we'll just um, mix up a bit. The recipe calls for chicken breast and I've got about a pound plus a little bit in my freezer that I had already cut them in half so they are definitely under three quarters of an inch thick and we'll start on the stovetop with a couple tablespoons of butter and a couple tablespoons of olive oil so using your one hand to dredge we dip in our egg mixture and then we're going to dredge through our flour mixture trying to coat all sides of the chicken and then I'm going to go right into my uh, pan of hot oil that's next to me and we'll do that for all the pieces of chicken in our case we have three good sized pieces of chicken and then one kind of little tiny piece if you're new here you'll not know this but I take a lot of liberties with recipes and I'm really bad about reading recipes even new recipes thoroughly before I start cooking um, let me just tell you then go ahead and preheat your broiler because you're going to need it for the peaches um, I forget this and so I have to kind of backtrack a little bit later in the process she is calling for your chicken to be cooked in an oven safe skillet and it was actually three tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of olive oil we're going to cook uh, and cook the first side of the chicken for three to four minutes until it's golden brown. These directions were spot on. Um, flip the chicken and then add three more tablespoons of butter, which I did do. So is this recipe healthy? We're not sure about that. It was delicious. Um, we're going to baste the chicken in between. Once we flip it, we will start basting and you're going to cook it on the other side for four to five minutes until it's done. Now, I just knew that the chicken was done based on how it felt as I was turning it. If you feel more comfortable, get your meat thermometer out and check it to make sure it's 165 degrees. This, um, the cooking time was plenty with the size of the chicken as it's written. One of my pieces is much smaller, so that gets turned a lot quicker than these other thicker, bigger pieces. And it's also going to come off the um, heat a lot sooner than the other pieces. And then I'm just going to start flipping the chicken as it nears that four minute cooking time. So here I am adding that other three tablespoons of butter and we'll just let that melt in with our cooking chicken. And then I start basting the uh, pan juices over the cooked chicken too. I tried to do the basting frequently. I probably hit it three or four times as this was cooking the last sides uh, that up to five minutes. I tried to do it several times. And here I'm about to take off the little piece of chicken that I wanted to keep my eye on. So I get that out of there. I'll baste everything one more time and then I'll move on to the second part of the recipe, which is preparing our peaches. And it does call for two and a half peaches sliced. And this might be the recipe where I didn't use I definitely didn't use two and a half peaches. I may have only used one and a half. Let's see here what I end up doing. We're going to um, go ahead and take the pits out. And the recipe does not call for peeling the peaches, but I go ahead and do that. It just calls for slicing the peaches. 
And guys, I'm keeping an eye over on the side here and uh, making sure that the chicken comes off when it's appropriate to. And now this is about the time I read the recipe and figure out I've got to broil the peaches. So I had pulled the uh, chicken off of the burner while I was doing that. And we're going to kind of finish the pan sauces here. This is where you're supposed to add three quarter cup dry white wine. Guys, I just don't have dry white wine. So I'm using some frozen uh, chicken bone broth instead. We're going to cut our lemon and then add three tablespoons of lemon juice to the pan. And then we're going to simmer that for five minutes. Now, if you've read the recipe and are preparing it correctly, your peaches will be coming out of the broiler already. In my case, they are not. So once your five minutes is up, you can add the peaches. I'm going to just have to take a little bit of time here and get my peaches under the broiler, but let's finish cutting them up here first. Oh, guys, again, I don't read the recipe, and I'm just realizing now, that's why she wanted you to use an oven-proof dish, is she wants you to put the peaches in with the chicken, drizzle it with the honey, the salt, and the chili flakes, and then put the whole thing under the broiler which I didn't do, so I completely messed that up. I put the peaches with just the chili and the honey on them under the broiler. Ah, I'm smacking my head as I'm watching this. This is typical Jackie cooking. Just completely rewrite the recipe. <laughs> but I will tell you guys, if you've made anything from Half-Baked Harvest, her recipes are delicious, and this one is no exception. Now here's a planned change that I had made to the recipe. I don't have burrata cheese. I don't even know where to find it. So you can substitute generally either mozzarella or cream cheese, and I kind of went back and forth on which one to use. Um, we, I just kind of settled on mozzarella cheese, and I'm not going to do the full eight ounces. I'm just going to do four ounces, and that's basically because now I put six tablespoons of butter in here, and I figure just what we need, cheese on top of it, so I did half the cheese. Um, I would like to try this another time and use the cream cheese and just see what difference that makes to the dish. I think both would be good, but again, this time I just opted for mozzarella. If you use burrata, I'm sure it's delicious either way. Okay, here I am doing it wrong. Don't do this, guys. You don't need to dirty this. Uh, just put these directly into your cast iron or whatever oven safe skillet you're using and put the whole thing under the broiler. Um, this worked. I'm sure it worked just fine. It probably would have given the chicken even a little more crunchiness to it, but don't do what I did. To finish the dish, it calls for a third of a cup of pesto and half a cup of fresh basil. So here I am. I'm going to wash and destem my basil and get that ready to go onto the prepared dish. Those broiled peaches are ready to come out of the oven. So we're going to nestle them in amongst the chicken here. Then we'll top it with our burrata fake cheese. We're just using mozzarella, as I said. And I'm using my homemade pesto. And I didn't measure this. I just take a spoonfuls, roughly teaspoon, Fulls and dollop them on here. So let's just say um, probably half of the pesto that it called for. Um, don't skip the pesto if you're a pesto lover. This was delicious. And the basil, fresh basil that we finish it off on, uh, just completely added to it. This is just a really good recipe. Very unusual flavors. Uh, very well done. So it would have been really great to maybe put this back under the broiler and get this cheese to brown up a little. 
I, of course, did not see that, so I'm just going to keep it warm until we're ready to make uh, dinner, to serve dinner. And this was de delicious. It was pretty. Like I said, this was kind of a fancy dinner. We did this for a Sunday dinner and delicious. I will make this again for sure. And I plan on making it the correct way next time. Uh, probably not with burrata cheese, may or may not have white wine, you know, those kind of things. Uh, that's typical in my household, but do what you do, guys. <laughs> I hope you all are enjoying this content. If you do, please like and subscribe. So if you come home from the farmer's market with a basket full of peaches, give these recipes a try and let me know what you think. Thanks for being here, guys. If you're liking our content, please consider liking, subscribing, and leave us a comment. Let us know what you're going to do with your peach harvest. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.